Hey, Tim Unker here, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at using Vim to update your resume. Hi. Okay, so now I've got my terminal open, and I first, before we start working on the resume in Vim, I want to take a look at some of the plugins I have installed and how I have them installed. So I'm going to just, uh, let me just get this a little bit larger here. And let's first, let's take a look at my VimRC. So we're going to go to vim.vimrc. Uh, you'll notice that I have, well, I have set syntax on, set no compatible, file type plugin indent on, tab stop, all equal to four, expand tab, relative number, that kind of stuff, remapping JJ. I have stuff, I, I like to have a thin cursor during insert, so that's what this stuff does, and it does a flat cursor during replace. Uh, you'll see somehow I'm bringing this Groovebox theme. I'm using Groovebox, the community version. I'm using Goyo here, uh, although I probably won't use that today, but I'm using that. Uh, that's just using a built-in Vim stuff. So this isn't a plugin, neither is the terminal a plugin. These are just built-in commands. So what I'm using is Vim's built-in plugin system to work with the plugin. So let's go out of sight of here and let's cd into dot Vim slash uh, pack slash plugins slash start. Now, if you're going to use Vim's uh, built-in system for working with plugins, you want to basically have the dot Vim, then the dot pack, then where this plugins is, you can name it whatever you want. And then you have to have start after here. Okay. I'm going to list out what I have and you'll see I have auto pairs, Goyo, and Vim Markdown. So the way I, I get these in here, I would just type git clone and then paste in the um, address of the uh, GitHub repo for the plugin. Okay. Um, and just make sure it's on HTTPS and you're not at trying to SSH it in and it'll work. Okay. So that's cool. I've got those plugins in there. Um, so I've got a one markdown one from Tim Pope. Um, you know, I think it provides just syntax highlighting, that kind of stuff, which is cool. Um, and then Goyo makes your screen a little narrower. I'm not going to use that today. I don't think for this. And then auto pairs, you know, if you open a parentheses, it closes it naturally. It's, it's a nice little plugin. Okay. So I'm going to go back here a little bit and within this dot Vim, pack folder i also have a colors and you can put whatever you want for the where the colors is but then you have to put opt okay and this is going to bring in my color schemes and i list this out you see i have groove box and that's how i'm getting my additional color scheme that i'm bringing in so that's my vim setup okay um additionally let me go back to my home directory uh additionally i do have pandoc installed so that's all you're going to need to install. I don't have text live extra installed for this uh, project. You don't need it. Um, we're just going to use Pandoc. Now, if you just have Pandoc and I try and convert a markdown file to PDF, it's probably going to throw an error and say, hey, you need to install text live extra. Um, but we're not going to use Pandoc to convert it to uh, a PDF. We're going to use Pandoc to convert this to an HTML file. We're going to style it in a way that um, when we use the print function of the browser, it's going to print it looking like a nice PDF. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get started. I'm going to make a directory called resume, resume, uh, dash YT, because we're doing this for the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to CD into that, and then I'm going to create a file with Vim, and I'm going to call it resume.markdown. Okay, and so let's start. So at the top, I probably want um, I, I probably want just my name, right? I want that to be a header one. So the the other cool thing about this with using using this with Markdown is I actually put this on my '90s style blog. I put my resume up there. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. If you've been watching this channel, you will realize that I'm doing an experiment with this '90s style blog. I am using Google Analytics on it, but. Uh, just to see how many viewers we can get. I think after a few days, three, four days, we're up to 12 unique users. So we'll keep seeing. I'll keep uh, pumping it. No paid ads, anything like that. Just uh, uh, just promoting it through my social channels and seeing if I can get any traffic on this after a while doing blogs. Um, 
So anyways, I'll post a link to that. It actually is styled with the way I styled it, so it doesn't quite look 90s. I may actually take away some of those styles so I can put my resume up looking like a 90s style uh, blog resume, but um, I, I will leave a link in the description if, in case you're interested. All right, so let's get started. I want my name and I want that to be uh, a header one. So I'm gonna go to insert mode. Uh, you notice I have a thin line. That's what uh, in the VimRC, those, those three lines, that's what that gave me. Uh, I'm gonna type my name, get some nice syntax highlighting there. Uh, and then I'm gonna do three dashes there. That's gonna create a horizontal uh, line break. And then let's come up with my fake phone number. So one, two, three. You notice how auto pairs closed the parentheses there. That's nice. And then we have four, five, six, um, dash, uh, I'm actually looking like, what's my real number? Uh, seven, eight, nine, one. This is a fake number. Um, obviously I don't wanna give my real number away on my YouTube channel because I might get even more spam calls than I get already. All right, uh, so, and uh, so let's make this a link. And to do that in Markdown, we're gonna put it in square brackets and then the parentheses, we're gonna put the actual link. So I'll put T tell and then just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Okay, um, all right, cool. Uh, I'm gonna put my email address because um, you guys can find that on my YouTube channel in case you have any business inquiries. Uh, it is on there, okay? So let's see, we have tunkert at gmail.com um, and then we have mail to tunkert at gmail.com. Okay, so that's going to give me the uh, link there in my resume. A couple things. Uh, one site that I need to update is uh, unkertdevelopment.com, but let's put that on there. Uh, we'll just put unkertdevelopment.com, and then you know we have to include the HTTPS here on the actual link part. And I hope this is going to be useful, and maybe you'll learn some stuff about Markdown and that kind of stuff, and it'll help you out. Uh, that way. I'll also put a link to my YouTube channel. If you haven't uh, liked, subscribed, and hit the bell for notifications, please do so. Um, and we'll just say YouTube slash C slash Timothy Unkert. And then we'll put the actual HTTPS and the www.youtube.com slash C slash Timothy Unkert. All right, so I got the YouTube channel up there and kind of the header of the document. Um, and then I also wanna include my GitHub. So I'm gonna put, uh, uh, just let's put GitHub slash GitHub slash Tunkert and then include the actual HTTPS for the actual link, github.com slash Tunkert. Okay, so that's the header. I wanna leave a space here and let's do another little horizontal line break. Uh, and then I'm gonna include a description under here, okay? So I'm gonna say something like, and I'm aiming this one, you wanna, you know, when you're doing a resume, sometimes you focus it on certain areas. This one's gonna be more software development. So I'm gonna say something like hardworking uh, developer with a background in math, math with a background in advanced mathematics. Um, skilled at creating custom solutions in the least amount of time, experience in, uh, or experience, let's put it now, my previous resume that I'm looking at the notes for on my other screen, uh, it is more towards front end web development. This one's gonna be more towards uh, programming, the programming side of it. So uh, I'm gonna say experience with, um, let's go in alphabetical order, C, uh, C++ and C sharp. I don't know whether plus is before sharp, but uh, Java and Python, let's say. Um, and let's have it something like experience working with. Okay. And um, 
then I'll say something about passionate, about open source applications like BIM and website accessibility. Yeah, we can conclude that. Uh, regular contributor GitHub. It's another way you can support the channels by following me on GitHub. All right, and then we're gonna go down here. And now in this next part, so what I'm planning on using is I'm gonna use a table to list out my skills, okay? And the way we do a table in Markdown is we're gonna have uh, a straight vertical slash here. I'll do a couple spaces and then I'm gonna have skills in the center here. Apparently spelling is not one of those. Uh, and then I'm gonna go down here and then I wanna have, a, you know, a couple of columns. So I'm gonna have C, uh, let's have another column down, uh, C++. Notice I don't need to line these up, okay? Uh, and then another column down, um, let's have C sharp. So we'll have a, a C row there. Uh, we'll have something like Java, Python, do something like GitHub. Um, maybe I'll throw in a Docker there. Uh, I want to include this at the end of the table. Um, let's see what else do I have on here? Uh, Linux and uh, I'm trying not to include web technologies um, because of the way I'm focusing on this. Uh, split seal editing for command line editing. And there we go. All right. Um, so that will actually format correctly when um, I change this to HTML. Next up, I'm going to include work experience. I'll probably speed this part up, but let's just get started. Work experience here uh, it's going to be just a second level heading. So we'll have work experience and then below each one um, we'll have a heading as, uh, you know, maybe like a third level heading. So um, the first one, say math teacher, because that's what I was before I got into this. Um, and I'll say Wyndham High School. Uh, Wyndham, Connecticut. Oh, one thing I forgot in my table, I'm sorry, is to separate the head of the table. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself here. Uh, we do that in this way. Actually, we might space this a little bit more. So we can add a, an extra one in here. Oops, didn't want to do that. Why am I doing that? Okay, there we go. So that, that'll that give the skills as the head of the table there. I was just reminding that this, uh, this, is, this next part is not a table. So I'll say 2017 to 2021. Again, I'm going to speed up this part. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and fill this out. All right. Oh, wait, before I speed up, uh, I'm going to use list items with the little asterisk. Okay, so that's how I do it. Okay, speeding up again. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to stop uh, for a moment. Nominated for Teacher of the Year. The last year I was there. Didn't get it, but anyway, speeding up again. Oh, yeah, by the way, I taught AP Calculus, Pre-Calculus, and Algebra 2. Speeding up again. Oh, yeah, did I mention I was an SAT tutor? Okay, speeding up again. Okay, slowing back down. Did I mention I was an executive ed editor and website, uh, well, basically webmaster for a startup in Connecticut? Okay, speeding up again. Oh yeah, slowing down again. Did I mention I was also an ACT tutor? Okay, speeding up again. 
Oh yeah. Did I mention I was a retired category one cyclist with two national championship medals and I was ranked number one in the US in the master's amateur category, but still speeding up again. <clears throat> oh yeah. Did I mention I ran my own website? Uh, back in the day, this was like 2005 or six. It did get up to, I think at one point it was like 7,000 views a day. It was crazy. Uh, anyways, speeding up again. Oh yeah. Did I mention I got a 4.0 GPA, uh, at UConn in their education program? <clears throat> okay. So. So I've got my um, stuff written for my resume. Now, uh, I do want to format it. Uh, thanks for sticking with me um, through through my uh, shenanigans as I went through and sped through this and then paused and I was like, oh yeah, you know. Um, uh, but looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, I have a decent resume. Um, and anyways, so now I've written this out and I want to convert it to uh, an HTML file. And then we're going to take a look at it and we're going to edit it from there. All right. So I'm just going to save this file. Let's quit out of here. And then from the command line, you do have to have pandoc installed. We're going to run pandoc uh, resume dot markdown. And I want a dash O for output and then resume dot HTML. I'm going to run that. It's going to take a moment and there you go. And if I list the storage here, we see that we created our resume.html. So I'm going to go into that folder and let's just take a look at it to start and then we'll, we'll modify it as need be. So I'm just going to, let's view this in the browser. And so you'll see that the formatting is like a 90 style website, um, which yeah, it's not so good. But um, it might be good for my 90 style blog. Check that out, link in the description below. Uh, but really, if I went to print this to PDF, let's just go here and print. Uh, and we're save as PDF. It needs some styling, okay? Uh, now, the problem is if when I've done this before, if you link in a style sheet, it's just going to print it out like this because it's the... Um, Typical print style sheet is going to override it. But the thing is, if you actually write your styles directly into the HTML document, uh, that will override the print statement, and then you can create a PDF from it. So let's uh, get to that. All right. So um, I'm going to go back here to the terminal, and I'm going to open resume.html. Okay, so let's do that. All right, and I'm going to now, we're gonna to start to structure this like a typical HTML document. So um, I wanna declare a doc type of HTML and let's go back and just capitalize this. And um, we're gonna open the HTML and we have the head of the document, we have character set, which is going to be UTF-8, and below that we have, uh, we want a viewport tag. Now, if I'm going to put this as an HTML, this isn't necessary for a PDF, but if I'm going to include this online, I probably want to include this. So I'm going to say content equals width equals device dash width initial scale equals 1.0. Okay. Uh, and then below that, um, let's have a title. I'm just uh, Timothy Unkert resume. Obviously, if you're doing your own resume, you can do this. Um, you know, your own name, obviously. Um, okay. And then below that, we want to have an opening and closing style tag. Now this stuff is going to actually overwrite the other stuff. Okay, close the head, um, open the body, go down to the bottom here, and uh, we'll close the body. 
and close the HTML. Okay, now what I'm gonna do just to make this look a little nicer is I'm gonna go to visual mode, GG to get to the top, hit equals, and that's going to basically indent it. You'll notice it, um, the file now indented um, with your typical indentation. Uh, so it looks a little nicer to start. Uh, so that's a Vim trick there you can use. Um, okay, so for the body, um, I want to go online here and I want to go to Google Fonts. Okay, and I want to import uh, some Google Fonts here. And I've actually got the fonts that I used. Uh, so I'm going to just copy this import line here and I'm going to paste that in. And I'm also going to paste in the font family tag here. And I'll paste that in and then save and move this over here. And then let's take a look at, let's refresh. Okay, so now you see the font has changed, okay? If we take a look at what's going to print preview here, you see it looks a little bit better, a little bit more modern style, okay? But there's still some things that I don't like. I like all of these headers, even though they're different, to be the same size. And um, so we want to go with that. So, okay. So uh, after the body tag here, let's address that issue. Let's take the H1, H2, H3, and I also want the table, uh, table header to all be the same size. And that's going to be, the table header is going to be right here. So you see this table, uh, table header here, um, skills. I want that to be the same size. So, and I think a good size will be about 2.5 rem. So we'll say font size 2.5 rem and we'll refresh. And we see we got all the fonts the same. Let's take the print preview. This, this is what we're using. We're using the browser to convert to uh, PDF. I actually, actually scratch that. I think I want the H3s to be slightly smaller because they're going to be subset. So, um, and I actually think 2.5 might be a little bit big. Let's do two, okay? And let's just take this out. Okay, and then we'll go down here and we'll say H3 and we'll do a font size of uh, 1.8 rem. Okay, um, all right, so now they're, they're a little smaller, okay? A um, couple other things, I want the body. Now, the cool thing about uh, CSS is you can use like uh, a margin of 100 picks. You can use margin of auto. You can also, if we're creating a PDF, you could also have a left margin of one inch and a right margin of one inch, kind of like you would, remember Microsoft Word or something like that. You could you could mess with the, the margin. So um, maybe you don't remember that, but I do. Um, so we're gonna have, the body's gonna have a margin left of one inch and a margin right of one inch, okay? Save that and refresh. Okay, so you see it does move it in some. Let's view it now from the printing aspect and you'll see it kind of lines it up nicely there. Um, we may actually, that may be a little narrow uh, of a body, so let's actually change this. Um, to 0 0.75 inches and um, let's check that out. Okay, so that's changed. Now if we go to print, um, yeah, that looks about right. Okay, three quarters of an inch on both sides. All right, so now I wanna line up the uh, my name. I want that to be centered. I want skills to be centered. I want work experience to be centered. I probably want to line over work experience. Um, so let's add some things. 
So if we go down here, we go to work experience. Actually, after this table, I'll include a horizontal line break and uh, let's cancel that out, refresh. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, that looks maybe a little bit better. I want this table to be different. So um, we go back up here, go down and put the style for the table. Let's have a margin left of, uh, let's do one inch, margin right of one inch. Okay, and let's refresh. Okay, and now we want to space those out, those table, uh, the table data. So let's take that and let's have uh, some padding with that. Let's do with that, let's do 10 pixels on the top, 20 pixels on the right, 10 pixels on the bottom, and 20 pixels on the left. Okay, and um, that looks okay. Uh, not great um, let's have the width of these be a little bit larger uh, so let's say the width is going to be two inches okay and let's try that okay so that's spacing it out a bit um, but we may want to do with the table just do this as auto because I don't think this is quite working out the way I had hoped but um, okay, so that that's a little bit better. That's kind of what I want. Um, I also want this. Uh, all these headings here, I want them to be text aligned to the center. So we'll do text align center. and there as well and okay so now all this stuff is going towards the center um this stuff here uh let's create some divs around this and maybe make the divs align to the center actually i don't want i don't want the h3s to align to the center i, I lied sorry I want those over there. I just want the main stuff. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I want to also have a horizontal break right above education. So uh, let's see if I might not have set, whoops, uh, what am I doing? I might not have set incremental search, so I'm going to do that. Um, let me search for edu education okay uh, no and let me just put a horizontal line above it okay all right well, let's take a look now what it's going to look like as in its pdf form okay um so it's starting to look a bit better i, I would like to align this stuff uh kind of more centered um, I like, well, I do want the work experience to have my horizontal line. I'm not sure if I put that or not. Um, there is one above the education, which is kind of nice. Uh, okay. Let's take a look. Um, let's look for work. Uh, Okay, work experience. So there should be something there. That's interesting. Uh, I need a break below the table. Um, and let's check that out. So I'm seeing it here. Okay, let's print it. Okay, now I see it. All right, so that's looking kind of nice. Uh, again, Got to get this top part here centered. So let's go take care of that. 
Okay, so this is all within a paragraph. So we can just say the style is going to be text align center. Okay, we'll refresh. That'll go to the center now. Um, I might want the below it also to do that. I'm not 100% sure if I want that, but let's see. Uh, so we'll say text align center. Okay, and yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, let's view it. Okay, so we've got that. We've got this stuff lined up here. We've got this stuff. Eh, I'm not sure I'm 100% of a fan of that. Uh, skills and work experience are all centered. I want all of these table data items to be centered. So let's go up and do that. Um, now you notice that, you know, best practice, put uh, your CSS in alphabetical order. I don't have that, but guess what I can do here? I can just go uh, sort and boom, done. Nice. Okay. Um, all right. We'll refresh. Okay. So now those are lined up. That's nice. Uh, you've, just see that line up nice, nicely there. Uh, so we've got that all lined up. Um, I don't like this website developer and then it's like, it's not wrapping down. So I'm going to fix that. So let's go to website, uh, developer. Uh, we have to go down again. Okay. Uh, I see where we are. So right here, uh, let's do two break tags. Okay, let's refresh and let's print. Um, okay, and it nicely brings it down to the next line. It is cutting off the quantum mechanics thing. Maybe I'll just leave that out. That's a little, little too much. So let's just go down to the bottom and actually leave that out. Let's refresh. Um, Nice. Two pages exactly. Works out well. Um, all right. So I think I'm going to give this to my friends so they can go take a look and be like, hey, you need to fix this. Obviously, I would change my phone number, might put in uh, current stuff. Um, but anyway, so that's that's how I would do it. If you wanted an alternative way, use Vim, use Pandoc, use Markdown, convert it to HTML, and then style it and use your browser to change it to a PDF. You don't need anything else. Uh, so let's just save this. And you notice I did a few tries of this, but timmuckerresume.pdf, sure, saved. All right. Accidentally put this up online on somewhere where I'm looking for a job. These people are calling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, and be like, why am I not getting him? Uh, maybe change change it to my real number. Anyways, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. It really helps the channel grow. You can also follow me on GitHub. I'm a regular contributor there. And as well, uh, if you are a teacher and found this video interesting, you may find some of my automation uh, programming stuff where I, I program the creation of worksheets interesting. And you might want to check out some of the stuff that I put on Teacher Pay Teachers. You can also support me if you're not a teacher there. Um, but most of all, thank you for watching. Stay tuned later today. I'm going to take a look at NeoVim and how I might do this with NeoVim. And uh, hope to see you in the next one. All right, bye.